Hello and welcome to this conference about active debris removal. We are going to talk about the legal issues arising with this very promising technology. First, a few words about the context. Of course, we have a critical debris crisis which can be potentially cataclysmic for the entire industry and also for the entire access to outer space. So sustainability is becoming an imperative and the industry must acquire a good practice. That is something that is already incentivized on one hand by the industry itself, of course, and also by international measures such as the uh, mitigation guidelines adopted by AEDC or UNCOPOS. Also, on the other side, for existing space debris, a lot of new promising technology are now arising and becoming progressively available. If we take the life of a space object, symbolized by this blue arrow, uh, basically at the beginning of the conception, when we are the blueprint uh, steps, mitigation guidelines apply. Then, during operation, maybe on-orbit servicing will apply, refueling, repairing solar panels, for instance, in, if we are talking about satellites. And then at the end of the life of the, of, the, of the space object, the commission should append. But maybe in sometimes self-deorbiting, for instance, will not work. And we're going to have to remediate that in order to uh, remove this space debris. And that's going to be ADR. And you can see that the arrow is not stopping at the, uh, at the ADR because maybe in some cases ADR could fail and that's and that will remain a space debris and maybe trigger some liability. That's something we're going to see in a few moments. If we make a little comparison uh, between uh, space industry and, and some industry um, that are based on networks, such as telecommunication, um, regulation is separated in two worlds, the world of ex-ante and the world of exposed. Ex-ante is everything related to prevention and exposed is everything related to remediation. So in this case, ADR is clearly a remediation technique, a remediation measure. It targets existing space debris, it's in orbit, and basically it belongs to exposed regulation. Talking about law, the space law ecosystem, as you can see, remains quite the same from the 60s, so pretty stable now. You have a core of international treaties, especially the uh, Space Treaty of 1967, which is very important, and then you have a flow of uh, applying uh, treaties such as the Liability Convention and then regional agreement, national uh, space law, and in parallel, a non-binding instrument, but but very important instrument uh, that are soft law. For instance, the uh, the uh, mitigation uh, measures for uh, space debris are soft law. They are not really binding per se, but they are very important by the industry and taking into account. So, if we analyze the space law principle, how can we apply them to ADR? I'm going to just uh, talk about the, uh, the Outer Space Treaty of 1967, which is the most important treaties, because the other one are just applying this. So it's important for us to stay focused on this one. Four main points. First, freedom of exploration. Of course, uh, it, is it is very important. I mean, it is crucial for states to be able to freely explore in a peaceful manner outer space. So that's, this freedom is guaranteed by Article 1st of the OST. But when you have a freedom, you also have a big responsibility, and that is the corollary. Of course, if you are, if you are free to go, uh, you also are liable for your, for your actions. Two types of liability. If it's honors damages, it's a strict liability. I mean, you are absolutely liable for everything that's going to happen. If it's in outer space, it's only for fault. So you can already see that you can have an issue with ADR. Uh, then, of course, if we have big responsibility and, and we have a, and we have a, a freedom, uh, we need to know what is uh, going on up there. So we need to register any space objects. And then, also very important, uh, cooperation is a cornerstone of uh, space exploration in order, especially, to save lives. So, what are the proper legal challenges of, of ADR. First, we need to understand what is a space debris. There is no official legal binding definition, unanimous definition of, of what is a space debris. Of course, we can find some works stating a very functional uh, definition of a space debris. Basically, a space debris is something that is, is, is a space object that doesn't work, which is pretty good definition, but there is no official document. The Outer Space Treaty doesn't really mention anything about the space debris, mainly because it was not really existing back in the days, but there was no, there was no update regarding these crucial points. And also, if we were having a, a stable definition of, of, of space debris, at which point can we really qualify a space object? Because a space object can be 
partly functional, but maybe not really reactive, but sometimes reactive. Is it really a space object? Do we need to declare it? So everything is not stable because there is no clear def legal definition of a space debris. And also ADR specifically. Is, it, is ADR really suited for any kind of space debris? Maybe not. Maybe the biggest one, as you can see on this chart extracted from the UN Corpus document. Then when we have this definition of the space debris, who owns that? The issue of ownership is absolutely critical. First question, does a space debris still belong to the original space object owner? Do we really, are we really, I mean, we can be, I mean, the state, the launch instance can be liable for that. But as a, as a for instance, a private company, are you still liable for uh, this, this junk? Because it, you, you cannot any way control it. So are you still liable for that? That is a question that needs to be uh, answered clearly. Of course, from a, if we make a legal analysis, of course, we can say yes, but it needs to be really understood by any stakeholders right there. And also, when you have space debris, can we really determine who is the owner? Can we really be sure of that? Because the situation is evolving. Maybe uh, maybe we have identified, or maybe some source I've identified, because the source of identification is not an official one. It's just some states taking some initiatives to, to track some debris. But it's not like something globally consensual. There's no treaties about that. Uh, so if we cannot determine the owner, can we even though act, even if we don't know who this piece of satellites is uh, belong to. Why do we say that? We say that because ownership is not just having an asset, it's a condition for liability. Because when we know what, uh, what is a space debris and who owns the space debris, we can trigger liability. But before that, we can also determine what is the legal nature of ADR. Because for instance, let's say we have a uh, space comp uh, a company based on Earth, uh, I mean, Earth's company, uh, uh, exploiting a, a satellite, and uh, the satellite is becoming a space debris, and so the company is going to see a ADR company. Let's say this, the, the space company is uh, located in the US, and the ADR company is located in the European Union. What's going to happen? Do we going to have an export control issues in there? Because do we going to have an export even if we stay uh, in orbit? Is there a transfer of ownership? Uh, does the, does the, for instance, the US company going to say, okay, this is now your uh, your junk. I mean, we don't really care about that anymore. You, we pay you to uh, to take care of this space debris. So now this is your space debris. That will be very uh, easy for the ADR company to say, okay, now this is my space debris. So now I take control and I do whatever I want. But in another in another hand, that give you a whole a, a lot more liability and parameters to take care. Or we take the other way around and we say, no, 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 we are a AU based ADR company. We're just doing a service. You retain ownership of this space debris. But in any case, we're gonna have. Uh, the ADR company is going to have uh, to handle the liability and going to have to uh, maybe uh, have a performance indicator. Maybe you're going to have some KPI to respect. Maybe it's going gonna, it's gonna to be liable if it fails to provide uh, the service. So that's something that needs to be clearly identified and, and, and clarified before the, the ADR mission to, uh, to happen and to occur. And so as, as we mentioned at the end of the day, liability is really the cornerstone of this. Ownership triggers liability. But also, also, don't, don't forget about the launching states, because we, we, we are really talking about two entities, but states remain also liable, as we saw for the space treaty, of their actions. So that's very important for them to know what's going on there, and they may condition ADR to some permitting or authorization. That's something to monitor. And then at the end of the day, also, who pay is very important uh, because if we want ADR to become a, a business, it needs to be, uh, it needs to generate some profits. So how can we pay that? Maybe we're going to have some taxation. Taxation is very tricky because taxation on a global scale requires sovereignty, which is quite a, thing, a utopia for, uh, on a global, uh, for a global tax. There is no global taxation system. So if one jurisdiction decides to tax because it says, OK, we, are, we, we want to be able to fund ADR missions, um, maybe it will remain alone and maybe you're going to have a lot of forum shopping, meaning a lot of space company will just Go, go abroad and say, oh, we don't want to pay that because if we need to, to fund, to have extra fund for, for this taxation, maybe we can't be, we can stay afloat. 
But also we can see on the other way around and say that uh, space debris is a very serious crisis and that's it, public service to remove that. So maybe we can think about PPP, public private partnership. And maybe we can think of also an international fund. So there is two ways to see that. It can, be, it can be something punitive, but it can be also something incentive, like a PPP, for instance. So it's going to be interesting to consider. If we're just making a little uh, analysis regarding the sea law, that, because we have a lot of similarities. I see there is no really claim of sovereignty. You also have to register. There is the vessel, uh, ship, the flagship, uh, and then uh, you have the principle of mutual assistance. More specifically, the notion of shipwreck is interesting to better understand and to what could be an official legal definition of, uh, of a space debris. If we take the French law, the Maritime Code, shipwreck has three conditions. Cannot stay afloat, there is no crew on board, and there is no measure that has been adopted to keep the ship, the, the wreck safe. The, the, the wreck safe. So, so these three conditions are cumulative and needs to be met in order for a uh, ship to be declared a shipwreck. If we were analysis, if we were putting this, this idea for a, a space debris that could be a non-functional space debris, a non-responsive space debris, and a non-maneuverable, non-controllable space debris. Can we think about the space law of salvage? Uh, law of salvage is basically any time you recover the ship, the, 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 the shipwreck of some of someone else, or, or ship at peril at sea, you can have a, uh, a, a a reward. The problem with space debris is that it has, for now, no value. So it's complicated to think about that. But the idea is interesting because there is this 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 idea of a service rendered. So that could be interesting. If we think about the coalition of states, like we saw for instance for the for the Artemis Accord, uh, Nairobi Commission is interesting also to see that basically the maritime uh, law has also the same issue as space law. Uh, it, it's something to this this commission is to prevent uh, oil pollution, but it's strictly limited to exclusive economic zone. They can't go in the IC. That that's the problem here. So ADR. If we go back to ADR per se. What can we take away from this presentation? First, we need to foster space debris awareness because we know that every space object will become one day debris. So this lack of space debris definition is a, a loophole that we need to, uh, we need to, we need to uh, overcome. Space debris definition needs to be uh, set and clearly uh, understood. Also, based on this definition, we need to clearly think about the liability regime. A lot of measure can be can be fought, and it's really difficult to think about amending space treaties in order to up, to, uh, to update them with this new technology. So maybe a, a bottom-up approach could be interesting, especially thanks to contract. Maybe contractual provision, for instance, of launching a launching contract or uh, of contract services can be amended to have this idea of of ADR. So that could be a, a way of of, of reflection. Also, national space regulation can be a, a good in incentive to foster ADR. For instance, if you take the, the French uh, Loi des, des Opérations Spatiales, the French law regarding the, the space activities, uh, one article is really, thing, is really uh, conditioning the, the granting of an authorization to launch to some requirement that, requirement that can be the uh, risk mitigation regarding space debris. That could be something interesting if it were globalized and harmonized. That's why this, uh, I'm thinking about, about, about this slide. Global harmonization is crucial because space debris crisis is global and it threatens everybody. So it's important to have a global harmonization, especially to avoid the, the little issue of forum shopping. We see also a rising commercialization of space, so that's interesting to have a bottom-up approach, having a contract-oriented approach in order to incentivize the stakeholder to think about this, this solution and maybe fund them at the end of the day. That's, that's what I try to, to summarize here. Thinking about the contract to, to orient it, uh, to, to, uh, to um, have a new, new type of regulation that could maybe at the end of the day uh, influence new treaties if we were thinking about that. So this global harmonization, I insist on it, is very important uh, in order for this individual effort to be globally uh, adopted. Never forget that Artemis Accord that are, for instance, uh, triggering space resources are only seven countries. If we take ESA, it's already 22 countries. So there, there is a, a huge interest. So we need to be confident that ADR will raise a lot of interest in order to accommodate the legal regime to make it happen.
Thank you so much for your attention.